Okay, we've talked about the basics of electrochemistry, but it gets a little bit trickier. For example, imagine these two scenarios. You've got a galvanic cell. A galvanic cell just means that the metals are connected electrically, and you've got a salt bridge, and you've got solutions in these, right? So in one case, you've got iron and copper, but in the second scenario, you've got iron and zinc. So what will happen in these two scenarios is actually kind of interesting. When iron is connected with copper, what happens is that the iron dissolves. We're going to see corrosion right over here, and then we're going to see copper plating out on this side. So it's going to get plated on from the outside. But when you take iron with zinc, you see the opposite. You see that the zinc dissolves away, and this time the iron gets plated on. You see precipitation of iron onto the outside. So what gives? How do you know which one it's going to be? How do you know whether your material is going to be corroded or not corroded in one of these reactions, right? That would be pretty important to know. Well, you, we need a tool to figure it out. So we're going to use something called the standard reduction potential tables, right? In these tables, you see, first off, they're reduction reactions. And you remember from basic chemistry, oil rig, right? Oil rig. That acronym stands for oxidation is the loss of electrons where reduction is gain of electrons so in all of these cases these are reductions because look at it you start with something an ion of a metal like gold 3 plus and you're giving it electrons it adds three electrons to become gold right nickel 2 plus adds two electrons to become nickel iron 2 plus adds two electrons to become iron and for each one of these, these are carried out under very specific conditions. That's why we call them standard reduction potential tables. Standard because we carry them out with a platinum electrode. So you take a piece of platinum, you connect it to your metal, then you put it over in the acid solution, which is one molar. You have to have acid where there's one mole of hydrogen um, ions per liter. And then you bubble H2 gas over it at one atmosphere, and this happens at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, right? So if you do it under those conditions, this is the voltage or the electrode potential that you will observe. Things like gold will observe a potential of 1.42. Now, because that's a positive voltage, that means that this reaction will occur spontaneously. So just like free energy, negative things were spontaneous, with electrochemistry, a positive voltage means spontaneous. I didn't make the rules. I would have done it the other way. But... So positive voltage means that you will generate 1.42 volts for that reaction to take place. But then you look down here at things like potassium. In order to take a potassium ion, give it an electron, and form potassium, you would have to provide a volt, almost 3 volts, uh, to make that reaction happen. Okay, So we call these things increasingly inert. So you've probably heard of like the noble metals, platinum, gold, silver. These things are relatively inert, meaning they want to form the regular metal. They do not want to dissolve. If you reverse this reaction and wrote it as an oxidation, gold dissolving into gold ions, it would be a negative voltage, right? And that you would have to apply that voltage for it to happen. Okay? But other things, they are increasingly reactive or active. Like, you've probably seen demonstrations where somebody takes sodium and they put it in water and it rapidly, you know, reacts with the water pretty violently to form sodium plus ions. Because, again, if you switch this, sodium going to those would be a large positive number. Therefore, it would be spontaneous. So we can use these tables. For example, up above, we saw iron with copper and iron with zinc. So let's look at iron and copper first. Iron and copper. So iron is right here, right? Where's copper at? Copper's clear up here. So right now, if you were to put these two things together, they're both written as reduction reactions. But a redox reaction must have oxidation and reduction. It can't just be two oxidation reactions or two reductions. That doesn't work. So one of these has to get flipped and rewritten as an oxidation reaction. So how do you know which one? You're going to flip the one that's costing you more um, in terms for it to happen. A negative voltage. Remember, that's voltage we have to apply to it. So that's not good. So in this case, we're going to take the one that's lower down on this table. The one that's lower down over here is the one that gets oxidized lower gets oxidized, right? Because right now they're written as reductions, but we could flip that reaction and it would become an oxidation reaction. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So in this case, iron and copper, iron plus iron two plus, 
Let's give ourselves a little more space here. So iron 2 plus picks up two electrons to become iron metal. But because that's the lower one, so that happens first off right now at a voltage of, we call that a V naught, right? V naught, that's our standard electrode potential. So the V naught, the voltage for that half cell reaction right now is negative 0.44 volts. But the, we said because it's lower than copper, this one's going to get flipped and written as an oxidation. So we can do that. We can say, all right, let's flip it. Now it's going to be iron metal dissolving to form iron 2 plus ions and giving up two electrons. When we flip the reaction, we flip the sign of the electrode potential. It now becomes positive 0.44 volts instead of negative. Now what was copper? Copper was 2 plus plus 2 electrons to form copper. And the reaction, uh, electrode potential for that reaction is positive 0.34 volts. So that's already positive 0.34 volts. What will happen if we sum these two reactions together, right? So the electrons will cancel out and we will be left with the following reaction. We'll be left with copper 2 plus plus iron yields copper metal plus iron ions. And just like we can add uh, the reactions together, we can add together the electrode potentials. So the change in this reaction, right, the delta V naught, we're going to say the change for this reaction is going to be equal to, we add those up, it's going to be 0 0.78 volts. Okay? So that's why in this case, this reaction, it came up with a positive voltage, which means spontaneous. Again, unlike free energy where negative was spontaneous, here a positive voltage means spontaneous. It happens automatically. Uh, this reaction occurs automatically. If we wanted to make the copper dissolve, we would have to switch this reaction, which means we'd have to apply this voltage to prevent the uh, iron from dissolving and make the copper dissolve. We'd have to intentionally do that. Now, let's think about the other one. The other example was iron and zinc, right? So where is zinc on this table? Well, zinc on this table is down here. It's now below iron. So we could write that reaction as well. Let's go ahead and write it. Right? So let's write it for that one. So this time it's going to be the same iron as we started out with. It's going to be iron 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives us iron metal. And that voltage was negative 0 0.44 volts. Um, but this time, zinc is even lower. So we're going to flip the zinc reaction. It's going to be zinc metal turning into zinc ions and electrons. So zinc metal turning into zinc ions plus electrons. Okay, And for that to happen, we now have to flip the sign of that electrode potential which is now going to be positive 0 0.63763 and just like before we can sum these two together so let's sum them up the electrons will cancel and we end up with iron 2 plus plus zinc giving us zinc ions plus iron metal and that's exactly what we observed now we can add this up as well the change in the electrode potential for this reaction is going to be positive 0 0.323 volts. And because it's a positive number, this is also spontaneous. That's why when you put iron and zinc together, iron precipitates and zinc dissolves because that's the only way that you get a positive voltage, meaning it's spontaneous. So these tables are very valuable for telling us which species is going to get reduced and which one's going to get oxidized when you put together dissimilar metals. There's also some really great tables out there, like this table right here is really great. Um, it shows a bunch of different engineering materials. And for these different engineering materials, it says, okay, if you put titanium together with stainless steel, what it shows here in this table is the... Um, the difference in the electrochemical potentials in millivolts. So basically, you with titanium and steel, you're going to have 90 millivolts um, of uh, of 
spontaneous uh, voltage, right? So because that's a small number, they call this contact being practically neutral, meaning you're not going to see a lot of corrosion if you put titanium together with stainless steel. But right over here, the metal of the ordinate side, the side row, if they're red, then it's going to be attacked. Like if you took um, lead and put it together with um, titanium, then you're right here. You're generating... 460 millivolts. That's zero. That's a half a volt, basically. So there's a half a volt of electrochemical potential between that, meaning it's probably going to corrode your tin. Or if you took titanium and you put it together with uh, chromium, right, then you're also going to generate almost a volt of energy, and so you're going to attack the chromium in this case. So these sort of electrochemical potential tables are pretty valuable as engineers, but they are neglecting something, which is how temperature and the concentration of your ions can influence these reactions. So far, we've been talking about equal molality of these solutions. What happens when the concentration of these solutions changes, right? Or what about at different temperatures? We'll talk about that in our next video.